Hi there, this is Emily from the Esri Canada Toronto office. I've prepared this three-part series to go over a workflow that will allow you to make use of your data in some of our ArcGIS apps. So let's continue with data to apps in 60 minutes or less. We've been following this workflow throughout the series, breaking it down into three main steps. Part one was all about getting your layers ready. I showed you how to add data, organize it, and share it with groups. Now it's time to focus on the map. If you haven't watched part one, please pause here and I've included this link in the description. Part two will focus on how you prepare your map for use in an app. We'll show you how to add data to the map, customize the symbology, and share it with users. Keep in mind that the map is a container for all of your data and symbology choices. Part one of this series ended off by sharing the data with a newly created group. I was invited to this group, and so I'll start by accepting that invitation. Once I accept, I'll have access to all the data within that group, and I can use it within my map. I have the fire events layer as well as the images that will be used for symbology. Our next step is to create the map. And there's a few different ways of starting this. We can create a map from the content page. We could start by the items detail page of a hosted feature layer, or even save an open session that's been started in Map Viewer. But in this case, I'll go with the first option because I like to begin with a blank canvas. From the Create drop-down menu, I can create a variety of different items and apps. I'll select Map and fill in some of the required basic information. I'll give it a tag. And press OK. We can see that a base map is automatically added for us. Base maps are one of the basic components of web map making within the ArcGIS platform because they serve as reference for our data. The first thing I want to do is change the default to something a little different. To do this, I have two options. I can come up here and click on the base map button and see which ones are available from the gallery and choose a new one. Or I can browse the living atlas for a vector tile version of the base maps that we already know and use. If you're not familiar with vector tile base maps, these multi-scale base maps have been delivered as pre-rendered image tiles to optimize performance. Because they use vector tiles, the features and labels are crisper and there's a more seamless transition between viewing scales. In my case, I'm looking for the dark gray base map. I can select the tile to get more information. As we can see, it lets me know that this is an authoritative layer. It's from the Living Atlas and it's a vector tile layer. I'll use that as the base map. Now that I have my background set up, I want to add the remaining content to my map. To do that, I'll add data that was shared with me along with the data that I already own. This time, I'm going to click on search for layers. Now in here, I have the drop down menu that lets me choose where I want to search for layers. By default, it's set to my content. I'll remove my search query and see that I have two layers that I can add. The next thing I'll do is I'll switch from my content to my groups. And now I can see all the data that's shared with me through groups that I have access to add to my map. I'll add the fire events layer to my map. I'll head back to the content pane. From here, there's a few things I can do. I can turn layers on and off and rearrange them as well. 
Map Viewer allows you to explore different styling options for your data. When you use Change Style, the styling options depend on the type of features you're mapping, whether those are point, line, or polygon. They also depend on the type of data, like attribute numbers, categories, dates, and so on. Each style helps you tell a slightly different story and answer different questions with your data. Changing a layer's appearance can be as simple as applying one of Esri's available symbology. In this case, I can select points of interest. I can scroll down to the type and color that I'm looking for, make my selection, adjust the size, and save. Next, the fire events data set we're working with is quite large as it is. There are too many points to see a clear pattern. We can configure clustering to make it easier to visually extract meaningful information. Clustering is supported for up to 50,000 features. And best of all, clustering is applied dynamically at multiple scales. Once enabled, you can control for more or less clustering to display more dots on the map, which is what we'll do in this case. This cluster data provides some great insight into the location of fire events and their frequency, but I'm interested in showing what kind of emergencies happen where. Styling suggestions make it easy to select the attribute information to display. In this case, I'll select a field from my attribute table called emergency type. Earlier, I found the appropriate symbology from one of the Esri provided categories. However, my team has custom symbology that they'd like to use. By publishing an image to ArcGIS Online and then sharing it publicly, I can use the items URL and add it to a list of custom symbols. Once it's selected, I can change its size and save it. I'm planning on adding custom symbology for all of these attributes, but this may take a little while. So here's the finished product. My completed map includes the dark gray vector tile base map, clustered symbology to display large amounts of point data, and custom symbology to show a unique look. I'll save my web map and begin my process of creating a web app. I could select a configurable app, begin a web app builder, or in this option, I'm gonna start my dashboard. In part three, we'll go over how to configure this operations dashboard. So before I leave off, I'll make sure to share this new operations dashboard as well as the map I've created with my group. I'll update the access and sharing capabilities and share it to the group. 